Hello, everybody. Welcome, Anissa. Welcome. Today, we are here in our meditation practices with Anissa, who's our coach and our teacher. And I have to say that I am so happy to be here today. I wasn't here in the last one, and I missed it. But I am so, so happy to be here with you. Welcome to your space. This is your space. Thank you so much, Virginia. Thank you so much for inviting me. And thank you so much for creating also this, this space to come I, together and to learn and to share. Absolutely. You know, many times when people... When we talk about meditation, people will say, oh, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to quiet my mind. And they actually get anxious. And we want today to talk about meditation practices, how you have to realize that you don't have to become another person, a new person. This is the same person. You're just training in awareness, making sure that your perspective is one with you at peace. So Anissa brings us this awareness and helps us through it. But I have to say that people get sometimes, oh, I don't know how to do it. I'm not that great. And the truth is, you just have to be calm. So Anissa, the floor is yours. Help us through this. How do we calm our mind? Because it's usually so full of so many things. Very good question. So uh, during the last uh, session, we went through about uh, why we meditate. So we have seen many different reasons that meditation is not only about sitting down and it spends some quiet time, which is also good mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. reduce the stress and reduce the release of the cortisol, of course. But it is much more than. It's about really... Um, being in the present moment and be able to decide more clearly during the life. So take a more clear and the best decision for where we are, of course. So meditation brings that, as you mentioned, inner peace and inner joy that we can see beyond the things. Because with the mind and with eyes, we see as we are seeing each other. But when we meditate, even now that I'm seeing you, I'm seeing you as a soul, as a human being, and I already feel connected. So it's going beyond what we see and um, what we analyze with our judgmental, analytical mind, let's say. Uh, we have talked also about many different methods. Uh, we name it uh, without going deep in it. Um, and today, uh, if you're agree with Virginia, I just want to start with a very pragmatical and uh, practical way to meditate, which is so simple. And I believe that sometimes we lose the simplicity in life. We go and we search for difficult things or we find attractive, uh, very difficult or luxurious or you know, some far things attractive and we let go of it is what is simple of what it is really already there. What do you think? Shall we do that? Let's do that. Yes. Um, so um, I'm just thinking if I have my ball here. I'm not sure if it's uh, working with it. Okay. So in different religions and different philosophies, um, we have a ball or we have a bell. So a very famous, uh, let's say, symbol in uh, Christi Christianism is mm -hmm. uh, it's a bell. It's a church bell, right? right. And um, basically the intention of all this bell or the ball is an invitation for take a moment and come home. And we forget that, right? We, we hear it many times and we forget that. So uh, with this ball today, with this, um, let's say, invitation, I would like to invite you to play and invite you to, to take a moment with your breath. Just a very little, simple practice. So wherever you are sitting in a chair or on a floor, that's totally fine. 
And the most important thing is that when we start practice meditation, we are not waiting for anything. We don't have any expectation. And the goal is just be there, to, to just be in that moment and to see what comes. So it's a moment of hearing. So I'm not sure how it's going to work with the sounds. I just want that you sit there. I'm not sure if you can hear it. Mm -hmm. And just observe your breath. Just the air is coming in. And observe that you're releasing the air and you're exhaling. You're breathing in slowly the air through your nose. And you're exhaling very slowly. And you can bring your focus and your breath anytime that thoughts come. It's a simple observation of the breath. You're not forcing it, you're neither controlling it. You're just being with your breath. Oh, I'm here. Hey. Hi. I'm home. And the thoughts come on. That's totally fine. We are a human being. So we're not avoiding our thoughts. We're just taking some moments for ourselves to be. And if there, there are some major thoughts, we can also observe them and sit with them. So again, you're slowly bringing your focus and your, your breath anytime that you lose that capacity of observation. You breathe in, you observe, and you say within you, I'm breathing in. And you breathe out, and you can say, I'm releasing and breathing out. And that also connects you to the whole universe that is around us. So we feel connected to the to the air, which is the element of the, of the planet, of the universe. And you, you can also connect yourself to other people who are breathing from that air. So maybe in that sitting moment, you can, you can realize the, the connection, the connection with other humans. And while you are observing your breath, maybe you are in a very good and joyful moment. So if you choose, you can wish that. We can wish for other people who are breathing from the same air, joy and peace and health. You are sharing the spaces. And if you're in a difficult moment, you can also see yourself connected and you can remind yourself that it is a difficulty which is human and other people who are there, they have been through that difficulty or they go because it's human. It's a very friendly practice and also compassionate. 
We're just sitting with ourselves, observing our breath. And be present for everything that comes. So we are holding a space for whatever comes to see okay. That's a very simple and powerful practice. Oh, I'm breathing in. I'm here in this world. I'm exhaling and breathing out. So in this moment, maybe you realize many different things. You can notice your body, you can realize how wonderful your body is working. And uh, it has been now 10 minutes, but we have been one 10 minutes. So it's an exercise that you can do it whenever you and wherever you are. You might be sitting in a bus or train, or you may be in the office and you feel that your energy is drained. Or maybe you had a discussion with someone and you had felt uh, not hurt or upset. I just suggest to do this practice and hold this space for yourself, bring compassion and observation. Again, to find that the best uh, action to take or best decision. So it, uh, yeah, it helps us really to, to see things how they're standing without having, uh, or let's say with reducing our egos or reducing our thoughts that interfere with the, with the decision that we usually take. And after that, we can just, uh, we can do it sometimes with open eyes. And if your eyes are closed, you can slowly open them. And sometimes I like to write down what comes in, right? During the meditation. Ooh. I could have stayed like this for an hour. It was great. I could have stayed like that. But thank you for reminding me to open my eyes. <laughs> so that was beautiful. And um, thank you so much, Anissa. So now we have Anita and Jocelyn. And I would like to start with you, Jocelyn. Um, how do you go about uh, meditating? What, what practices do you do? One of the very simple things I started off with was walking meditation, actually. So for me, I use meditation as a form of relieving my stress. So the walking meditation helped me tremendously in that particular area. Another one that helped me tremendously in terms of turning inwards is what I call the candle, what our Dr. Masters actually from his um, dynamic meditation series he taught us about the candle concentration meditation. And so that one actually helped me to turn inwards into myself. And that's where I get all my answers, um, where I get relief from pain sometimes. Um, so this are uh, the two that is particular, um, very fun, I'm very fond of those two. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. And Anita, I'm so happy to see you again. Thank you. Be on the same space. Well, <laughs> so good to have you here. Um, so let's talk um, a little bit about what works for you and how um, you've seen that this has helped you, right? This, these practices. 
Oh, they have. Well, first of all, hey, everybody. And thank you, Mar, Anissa. So good to see you, Reverend Jocelyn, my sister. And, and thank you, Virginia. Yeah, meditation is one of those that I went, I've gone through the gamut of them because it is, you know, we think 60,000 60, thoughts filter in our head, in our mind. So, of course, it is it is discipline and dedication to learn to quiet the mind. Well, going through my travels and, and accepting meditation, I was one who I started meditating and I would say, oh, you really don't need it. That's one of those things you don't need it. And then I would stop and then notice that, okay, energy has shifted in my life. I mean, for real. So then I would begin to meditate again. So now it, it is a standard practice with the meditation I keep in mind because I've read many different books, you know, yoking, yoking, um, the difference between prayer, talking with the creator universe or whatever, contemplation, staying in the moment, just being aware of the now, mindfulness. Meditation is receiving from the universe, the creator. So for me, um, sometimes I use mudras. Okay, I use the mudra, the energy as an energy worker. Um, walking, as Reverend Jocelyn said, I'll walk. This is the last time that I walked, not too long, um, in doing my meditation because receiving um, can be from all places, like receiving from Anissa, receiving from you, receiving from Reverend Jocelyn, receiving from Mark. Well, one time when I went for a walk, I received information because that's how it, I, you know, I say my walking, um, you know, God just speaks that is just so clear sometimes with my eyes open, not necessarily my third eye, but our visual, not the metaphysical going beyond the physical, but the actual physical. And when I'm walking, I happen to look up, you know, my, my spirit said, look up. And there was a soaring eagle just soaring. And I knew that that was, you know, when I saw it and I didn't have my camera, but then I felt right then and there, I, I called it a feel heard. I knew then that, 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 the message from the universe was that I thought of sisters helping sisters spread their wings and soar. And I knew then, and I came back in our group, I said, y'all, we're going to be straight. We're going to be fine because this is the <laughs> only popping. Because, yeah. <laughs> so that was my, that was an actual experience um, for meditation. And then I also have, like, I have something called the garment meditation. And every now and then on my vibe and with the kiss, I'll go on and share with people about how, you know, use your fingers as energies, you know, that kind of thing. And then um, uh, the guided, guided and visual. But my thing I try to share with people, meditation again is receiving. We cannot receive if our mind is cluttered. If we are hearing externals, we, you know, it comes a point that we've got to let go of anything that is external so that we can actually receive what is on the internal because meditation is receiving, receiving. And it's like, if I'm talking and you're talking at the same time, I'm not hearing you, you're not hearing me. So one of us have got to be quiet. You know, so yes, yeah, so meditation in in and of itself. When you get into the the hoax, I know there are many. Like Anissa said, there are many types of meditation, and and I use I use them. I've used many of them, um, but I do keep in mind that the essence, the yoke, the yoga, yoking with the Creator, is the essence. That is the reason that we meditate. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And I think that the more people start to realize that it's part of who you are, that it's not something separate from me. And um, I am talking as a lay person that when I say about meditation, they're like, oh yeah, mindfulness, you know? And I'm like, um, it's not, oh yeah, mindfulness. There's there's something behind it. There's, some, there's a connection in, about being in the now. And sometimes we get so confused with what's trending. Yeah. We don't internalize it and realize that it's going to help us grow in ways that we don't even think. But how do we get away from the trendy part of meditation and mindfulness and all these things that everybody announces that you look in Facebook and it's everywhere and people are trying to sell you this and sell you that. And the truth is that it comes from, from this connection from within, you know, with what's around you. So Reverend Jocelyn, um, how, how do we do that? How do we, connect in that way one of the things dr anita talked about and i totally love the word she used she said yoking that connectedness 
and it's about getting into that quiet space, whatever that quiet space may be for someone. That quiet space doesn't have to be a mat that you're lying on. It does not have to be, um, it can be anywhere. So it's imperative that in, in order to yoke, you get into that square, quiet space and whatever method that is comfortable for you, because we would know internally we have that knowing or intuition guides us into what might be the best meditation at a particular time for a particular situation. And so that's what I would share with someone in terms of instead of all the noise around with what is mindfulness, what I should have, what I shouldn't have, let's focus on the yoking. Let's focus on what we are ready to receive by getting quiet in whatever quiet space that is, however that look to you. And then you choose, you, you will hear, you would know what practice, which one would be the best for me in whatever particular situation that might be. And there, will get, there you will get your receiving. There you will get that bonding. I love it. I love it. You know, I, I read recently that in some countries, instead of putting children in timeouts, they're teaching them to meditate. And what they've seen is such an amazing growth in these little people. So, Anissa, how do we involve? How do we do it as a family? How can we really help our young children and our young um, teenagers start to really um practice and, and see it as something they can use to continue within their power because um, I've seen and I've read about powerful results. How can we speak to our children and involve them in this? I just wanted to highlight what uh, Anita said because I believe it so strongly that uh, meditation is about receiving and also is about connection to I, I like to call it God, you may call it um, energy, you may call it universe, you call it to that power, let's say, um, that is there. And it's about um, receiving the, the food, right? The spiritual and the mental food, actually, that is there. So it's a, it guarantees, actually, well, let's say it's improve our mental health by improving the spirituality, let's say. So it's, it's a need, basically, even though in the society it has been um, not taken into consideration for a long time, or let's say in some societies, but it's a food that we need to receive to stay healthy. Uh, we take vitamins, right? Um, so it's something that our system makes. So meditation and praying is something that our system makes, and it's the truth of them. It's true. So um, it's something that uh, one needs to, as uh, uh, Jocelyn said, to, to see what is right and what is the best for you. And even if you see something fancy, you want to try that, maybe that works for you. So don't have judgment about that and go and try it. Maybe that's something that brings you the, you know, something that you have never tried. And you say, ah, that's nice. You mentioned about the... So thank you so much, uh, Anita and Jocelyn, for these two very important points that you remind us mm -hmm. that meditation is receiving and it, uh, it allows us to this. I, I see it as a channel, right? As an energy healer, I can measure the channel and the channel is just between you and the God and universe, whoever. So when you open it, you can receive, right? We don't see it, so sometimes we don't take it to the consideration. And Jocelyn, thank you so much for mentioning that we need to find the best meditation for us. Um, going back to your question, Virginia, I believe that the parents are the best example. So we do what um, our parents do, let's say at home, at least when the children are small. I remember my grandpa, uh, you know, waking up maybe at five, six o'clock in the morning for praying and meditation. So I have this in my mind and my mom praying for each event and, you know, not only in the difficult moments, but just the daily praying. 
And then you want to do that, right? I see my niece, she's three years old. And when she's with my dad, uh, so with her grandpa, she likes to read book. Why? Because my dad is reading continuously books, right? And when she's with my sister, she wants to play with the phone. So I'm like, oh my God, she's the same child, right? So I believe that parents, they have a very big influence and impact on the child. So you cannot say, oh, uh, my child is not uh, in peace or she's not cold. Of course, a, a healthy child needs to be energetic, right? Um, as we all have been. Uh, but uh, to bring that, uh, if you like, that your child uh, may be or do something, it depends on you as well, because it was like, um, they, they, how do you say, they do what you're doing, so they're just a little of you. Um, and if you're doing yoga, if you're painting, my, nie my niece is painting very nice, because my sister is a nice good painter, so she wants to paint like crazy. She sees my sister and she likes to paint. So whatever we do, really, um, we influence and impact our society. Uh, so I think that uh, we can start with ourselves. That's the most important thing. I see my husband, he had his meditation, of course. He used to go to the mountain for meditation. And now I see that he has more at quiet uh, moments for himself at home. So I think once we started with ourselves, we can bring that little by little um, to our family. And then family is small organ, small cell of the community. And then we start to, uh, how do you say, transfer. It's contag contagious, right? Like the other things. And, and I think that um, we're, we're going on the right direction. For the longest time, we would think that spirituality was somebody for certain type of people with certain type of gifts. And now we finally realize that we all have that gift, that we all receive and that we all are energy. And I, for one, I'm so excited to be here because we talk about women and their children and how much mothers and women even when they're not their children, you nurture, it's, it's, it's our nature. How beautiful for us to be able to nurture that way, you know, and really start to resolve issues um, by really finding our center and understanding. So I want to thank you all, and I'm going to finish with each one of you, um, for really being here today and helping us. The person that's out here saying, oh, my God, life is so difficult, saying, you know what, you are part of everything. And the moment that you can start receiving and you, you internalize that, life starts to look very different. And there's no perfect way of meditating. You just practice it every day, right? But um, talking as a, what I hear even the stress of meditating correctly, I'm like, you're not, you're not supposed to be stressed. It's supposed to be something, you know, that you practice and you start to feel better. So, and, and really connect because I think that's the most important thing. So Anita, um, thank you for being here. And I know there's some powerful words that you can share with us before we leave. We're going to be closing in like three minutes or two minutes. So. I just want to say that, you know, with meditation and with anything, the first thing that we want to do is just first allow ourselves to love ourselves, to know that, you know, I am in our imperfection. There is perfection. And just as well as we are, we are human. We are also divine. And it is OK to to tap into ourselves. It is OK to find out some things about ourselves that we, we may want to change, because a lot of times that's what keeps us from meditating, because we don't want to get into our own thoughts. We're, we don't know about our own thoughts because we're insecure about our own thoughts. And just to know that, hey, you know what? I am powerful. I am I am who I am. And it's OK, whatever that I'm going to do, that I am worthy, deserving and enough to go within myself to receive those answers. Wow, definitely. How afraid are we so many times to really dig deep, you know, and really connect with who I am? I was Jocelyn. Me. Yes, with the me, Jocelyn. And with that, with the, we got to recognize also that oneness, knowing that we are one with 
each one, we are one with nature. And so there shouldn't be a fear, but rather that ability to tap in and to receive. So that's what I want to leave folks with. Think about the oneness. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And that's so true. We are one. And Anissa, then we, our farewell is with you. So go ahead and like um, leave us with your kindness and your words at this moment. I feel like I am in a very nice space right now. I feel very, very, yeah, right? Go ahead, Anissa. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for you for creating this space. Um, just to come adding to what Anita and Jezelina said in the same, let's say, path. Um, take it with curiosity and uh, with a smile. And um, yes, I just would like to add this one. Take it with curiosity and a smile to say, okay, let's try that. It's like new food. Let me see how I like it with no judgment. Absolutely. And I love that we're ending with no judgments and how how we need to internalize that. No judgments towards ourselves. We're so hard on ourselves so many times. And this is particularly the time when you have to really own who you are, own that power, and really be curious about it and try what works for you. So thank you all so much for being here today. Um, we're looking forward to our next um, session, but it was really wonderful. Thank you, Anissa, all the way from Switzerland. Thank you, thank you Dr. Anissa, you. and thank you, Jocelyn, for being here. Thank you. I've enjoyed myself. So thank you, Anissa, Virginia, Reverend Jocelyn, Mar. I love you all. And Mar, bye. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank bye. you. Have a nice thank evening. You. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.